Hi, do you want to learn English or any language for free? Well, then I have some tips for you. Okay, so basically, number one, you need to know your motivation. The first language learning tip might sound obvious, but if you don't have a great reason to learn a language, you are less likely to stay motivated over the long run. For example, wanting to impress English speakers with your French or Arabic is not a very good reason. Wanting to get to know a French person or an Arab person in their own language is another matter entirely. Okay, so no matter your reason, once you have decided on a language, it's crucial to commit. Okay, um, and then you need to find a partner. Okay. Um, even if you can't get a sibling to join you on your language adventure, finding some kind of partner will push both of you to always try just a little bit harder. Okay, I think it's a you know great way of actually going about it. You have someone with whom you can speak, and you know uh, that's the idea behind learning a new language. And then go to, you know, talking to yourself, okay? It's not like talk to my hand, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm joking. Well, okay, uh, if the last language learning tip isn't doable, yeah, because you have no one else to speak to, there's nothing wrong with talking to yourself, yeah, um, in a foreign language. It might sound really weird, but actually, you know, speaking to yourself in a language is a great way to practice if you're not able to use it all the time, okay? Um, if you don't know how to go about learning um, a new language, um, you know, this can keep new words and phrases fresh in your mind. Uh, also, it helps, you know, to build uh, up your confidence for the next time you speak with someone else. And then we have keeping it relevant, yeah? Um, so if you make a, you know, conversation goal, from the beginning, you're less likely to get lost in textbooks. Talking to people is one of the best ways to learn a new language um, because it keeps the learning process relevant to you. Um, you're learning a language to be able to use it. You're not going to speak it only to yourself. Okay. Now, the creative side is really being able to put the language that you're learning into a more useful general everyday sitting be that you know through writing songs generally wanting to speak to people or using it when you go abroad right then we have having fun okay using your new language in any way is a creative act right think of some fun ways to practice your new language uh, you could make a radio play with the friends. I think now these days we have a lot of apps, you know, where you can kind of do radio play and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, you can also, you know, write a poem or simply talk to whomever you can. Um, you have a lot of social apps these days. Um, and but anyways, if you can't find a way to have fun with the new language, chances are you aren't following, you know, this step. Now, one more thing, uh, it's really important. Do not ignore it. It's like acting like a child, yeah? Um, with this language learning tip, like, you know, we don't mean throwing tantrums, you know, but rather try learning the way kids do, yeah? Uh, the direct link between age and the ability to learn is kind of similar, okay? With uh, some studies dispelling the myth that um, children are better learners than adults. The key to learning as quickly as a child may be too simple take, um, you know, to, to maybe to simply you know take on certain childlike attitudes, lack of self consciousness, a desire to play in the language, and you know a willingness to make mistakes. Um, you know, we learn by making mistakes, you know, you all know that. Um, as kids, we are, you know, expected to make mistakes, but as adults, mistakes are taboo. Um, think how, how an adult is more likely to say, I can't, you know, rather than, 
I haven't, you know, learned that yet. So, you know, to be seen failing, you know, is a social taboo of that uh, doesn't burden children. So when it comes to learning a language, admitting that you don't know everything is uh, basically the key to growth and freedom. Um, also, one more thing, you need to leave your comfort zone. It's not about just learning language, yeah? Whatever you want to do in your life, you need to leave your comfort zone to be able to uh, experience new things, okay? Um, so willingness to make mistakes means being, you know, ready to put yourself in potentially embarrassing situations, okay? This can be scary, but it's the only way to develop and improve, right? As I, as I said, you know, you need to leave your comfort zone to be able to experience new things. No matter how much you learn, uh, you won't eat, you know, you won't ever basically speak a language without putting yourself out there. Uh, you need to talk to strangers, you know, in in that particular language. You know, you can maybe go out and about, you know, just ask for directions, you know, or order food, try to tell a joke. Well, I know this will be a terrible mistake, you know, telling a joke. Because uh, I've been in those um, awkward situations where, you know, maybe I've done in my life, uh, you know, I was kind of, you know, learning a new language and I tried to tell a joke, but, you know, it was a terrible mistake. Well, mistakes are terrible, but not every mistake is terrible. Ah, but anyways, um, you know, the more often you do this, the bigger you, your comfort zone becomes and, um, you know, the more at ease you will be in new situations. You know, at the beginning, you're, you're going to encounter difficulties, yeah? Maybe the pronunciation, maybe the grammar, the syntax, or you don't really get, you know, the sayings. But I think the most important thing is to always develop this feel. Every native speaker yeah, has a feel, you know, for his or her own language, and that's basically what makes a native speaker. Or whether you know, you can you can make um, the language, you know, your own. Uh, uh, by the way, you know, I was working with, um, you know, some company, and then there were the, these native people, and uh, you, you know, to they were actually learning to pitch, you know, to the customers. So um, I was like, you know, oh, okay, so that's your language. Why do you have to learn? But even the natives, they need to learn certain things, you know, no one is perfect, right? So that's what I'm saying, listening is also important. Um, you know, you must learn to listen, I repeat, learn to listen before you can speak. Every language, you know, sounds strange the first time you hear it. Um, the more you, ex you know, expose yourself to it, the, the more familiar it becomes, um, you know, making it easier to speak and comprehend. You know, if you're able to pronounce anything, you know, uh, it's just you're not used to doing it, yeah? For example, the, the rolled R, you know, R, you know, doesn't exist, um, you know, in my form in English, you know, um, but, you know, that's kind of stuff, you know, the best way to go out, you know, to go about mastering that is actually to hear it constantly, right? Because at times I can't, I can't say R, R all the time, you know, like American people, so, or some of the accents where they pronounce R um, and T as a D, right? Okay, then, um, as I told you, like, you need to be a good listener, and then also you need to be, um, you know, a, you know, observant as well. So different languages make different demands on your tongue, lips, and throat. So pronunciation is just you know as much physical as it is mental. So one way it might sound a bit strange is to really look at someone while <laughs> while they're saying words. Okay, and that's creepy. I understand. I really, I really understand. That's creepy. Okay. I uh, don't you know don't mention my name. You know if someone did something bad to you when you do that. Okay, I'm joking, but. You know, you're just trying to, uh, it's not like you go to a you know, coffee shop or, you know, in a train station or whatever and you start staring at someone, no, no, don't do that, yeah? You can do it by watching movies and, you know, stuff like that. You're looking at your teacher, right? So believe me, it might be difficult at that, you know, at the beginning, yeah, but you will master it, okay? It's something that is actually quite easily done. You just need to practice, okay? Um... Also, as I said, you know, if you can't watch a native speaker in person, you know, like uh, at the train station or somewhere, but I'd recommend do not do it, okay? That's super creepy, okay? So you just do it, you know, online. Uh, so you've made up, you know, the, the pledge, you know, how to proceed and, you know, um, 
Well, is there a proper way to go about um, um, language learning? Well, I tend to, you know, want to absorb as much as possible right from the start. So if I learn something, I really, really go for it and try to use it throughout the day, okay? So, uh, well, finally, uh, you know, I would like to remind you that the best possible outcome of speaking a language is communicating with others, yeah? Being able to have a simple conversation is a huge reward in itself. Reaching milestones like that early on, you know, will make it easier to stay motivated and keep practicing. Now, you know, and don't worry about your current speaking um, ability. If you begin any interaction with, uh, you know, um, I'm learning and I'd like to practice, most people will be patient you know, encouraging and happy to oblige. So, you know, that's pretty much it for now, and I hope you have learned a lot of things today. Um, the reason why I mentioned a lot of points in here is because I, I know, um, just as we prepare ourselves for presentation, but when we go in the dice there, uh, we tend to forget and we kind of eat words. So um, if I mentioned five points here today, that if, 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 you, if you comply with, you know, at least two, yeah, then you'll be able to um, get something out of this uh, podcast. And that's, uh, you know, that's my goal. Because um, in the past, you know, when I started podcasting, I actually, uh, you know, focused on reading books and, you know, uh, providing you guys with the summary of books. But then I thought, no, I need to do podcasts. And there as well, I mentioned if you look at my podcasts, um, I only mentioned a few points, uh, but then I realized, no, I, you know, just need to put, you know, put myself in your place and as if I'm learning something. So, yeah, thank you very much for listening. I'll see you tomorrow with another podcast. Have a nice one.